uh, friends, thank you for your patience as we navigate this um, first ever. I think the last five, four weeks have been full of too many to count first ever's, I think. Um, and uh, we're excited to, to join you this morning. Uh, joining all of us are folks from First United Church in Waterloo, from Parkminster United Church in Waterloo, from Emmanuel United Church in Waterloo, from Westminster United Church in Waterloo, and I'm sure that we have folks joining us from all kinds of other places. And so we are thrilled to be able to join together and uh, thankful that you've been able to join us either through Zoom or through online live streaming uh, through Facebook. So I just want to take a moment to say thank you to the many people who are making today's service possible. Um, of course, a big thank you to all of the, the ministers who are leading this morning. We have from Emmanuel United Church, we have Reverend Jen. From First, we have Reverend Eva. From Parkminster, we have Reverend Heather and Reverend Joe. I, myself, am Reverend Andrea Allen from Westminster. And leading us in music is Westminster's musician, uh, Cynthia Hybert. And joining her is a family choir, so we're super thankful to have some voices. So you will hear the voices of Ludwig, Gabriel, and Isabel Meissner um, singing along with us and helping to lead in the two hymns that we will be singing throughout our uh, worship time. Um, we also created a joint Monday Thursday worship, and that has been shared uh, to pretty much all of the church's YouTube channels and Facebook pages. So if you didn't get a chance to catch that yesterday, uh, you're more than welcome to check those out and, um, and participate in the Monday Thursday from yesterday. Uh, for those of you who have a Voices United hymnal with you and prefer to follow along with your hymnal, just a heads up that we will be singing from Voices United 141 and from uh, 144. Um, the words for all of the hymns will be on the screen. So for those of you who can see the screen, you should be able to follow along with the words on the screen. Um, and then a uh, final uh, announcement that all of our churches are doing our own uh, individual Easter Sunday services. Um, on the final screen at the end of our service today, there will be a little note about where you can find each uh, church's worship services. Um, of course, you're also very welcome to contact that church to find out more details. Um, at the end of our Good Friday service, you are invited to listen to the postlude that Cynthia will be playing for us and then uh, leave in silence. You're welcome to sit and meditate through the postlude uh, to pray um, and then sign off and continue about your day in this holy time and these final moments of Jesus' life as we await the resurrection. So we will begin with the territory acknowledgement. Long before those of us who are settlers and those of us who are descendants of settlers came to this land, there were people here. Many nations of people lived and live on the land we call Canada. Given responsibility by the creator to be stewards of this land and all that lived on it. We know these people as the first nations Today we remember what it means to live thankfully. Let us give thanks for the First Nations of this land wherever we might be right now and let us remember that in Waterloo, we worship God on the historic and unceded territory <coughs> of the neutral, the Anishinaabwe and the Haudenosaunee of the Six Nations. As Christ's people, let us be people of love, of truth and of reconciliation. Oh, my Lord. 
If you happen to have a candle with you this morning, I would invite you to light it with me. As we remember that Christ, the light of the world, promised to be with us wherever two or more are gathered, it is with gratitude that we give thanks for the ability to worship together in many new and uncomfortable and becoming uh, comfortable ways. Friends, our call to worship and prayer of confession is responsive. If you are able, and as you are able, you are invited to say the words aloud wherever you are. From the busyness of our lives, we have come here on a day that is different. In the midst of the world which holds the promise of spring and new life, we have come to share a story of pain and execution. Come and hear the tale. Come and share in the tragedy. Come and embrace the darkness. God of light, God of shadow, in our time together today, Keep us aware of your presence in the darkness. Help us to see meaning in this terrible story and keep the fire of hope alive in our hearts. Today is Good Friday. Today is God's Friday. We come together together in worship. worship. Let us pray. God of passion, on this day of suffering and death. We remember those times we have been part of the crowd, seeking our best interest over what is right and good. God of devotion, on this day of fear and denial. We remember those times when we choose the path of safety over loyalty to your way. God of constant presence on this day of despair and loss. We remember the ways we have wandered away from your presence only to complain that we are abandoned. God of the cross, for all the ways we have missed the mark, all the ways we have come up short, Forgive us. Through your grace, bring us back into relationship. Help us find the path again. Even in the face of sorrow and rebellion, even in the face of death and denial, even in the face of fear and despair, God's grace knows no bounds. We are forgiven. We are called back into relationship. We are set back on the path that leads to the realm of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we continue through our service, as we, sorry, as we continue through our service with the Stations of the Cross, you are invited to sit back and experience, experience Jesus' last few hours. Each of the 13 stations will have a piece of mixed media art created by Jessica Miller Kelly to consider as the scripture for each station is read to you. 
After every few stations, we will sing a verse of Voices United 141. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barbarus and kill Jesus. Pilate said, then what should I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, crucify him. But he said, why? What has he done wrong? They shouted even louder, crucify him. Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere and that a riot was starting. So he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your problem. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's house and they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a red military coat on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a stick in his right hand. Then they bowed down in front of him and mocked him saying, hey, king of the Jews. After they spit on him, they took the stick and struck his head again and again. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the military coat and put his own clothes back on him. They led him away to crucify him. Carrying his cross by himself, he went out to a place called Skull Place, in Aramaic, Golgotha. The greatest among you must become like a person of lower status, and the leader like a servant. So which one is greater, the one who is seated at the table or the one who serves at the table? Isn't it the one who is seated at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, the disciple took her into his home.
As they were going out, they found Simon, a man from Cyrene. They forced him to carry his cross. Jesus said to everyone, all who want to come after me must say no to themselves. Take up their cross daily and follow me. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. People were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he really is the Christ sent from God, the chosen one. The ones who are considered the rulers by the Gentiles show off their authority over them. But that's not the way it will be with you. Whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the human one didn't come to be served, but rather to serve and to give his life to liberate many people. A huge crowd of people followed Jesus, including women who were mourning and wailing for him. Jesus turned to the, woman and, to the women and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Rather, cry for yourselves and your children. For the time will come when they will say, Happy are those who are unable to become pregnant the wombs that have never given birth and the breasts that have never nursed a child. Thank you. 
This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You have heard that it was said, you must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who harass you so that you will be acting as children of your father who is in heaven. If you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? Therefore, just as your heavenly father is complete in showing love to everyone, so also you must be complete. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and his sandals and divided them into four shares, one for each soldier. His shirt was seamless, woven as one piece from the top to the bottom. They said to each other, let's not tear it. Let's cast lots to see who will get it. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The notice of the formal charge against him was written, the king of the Jews. They crucified two outlaws with him, one on his right and one on his left. People walking by insulted him, shaking their heads and saying, ha, so you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? Save yourself and come down from that cross. It was now about noon and darkness covered the whole earth until about three o'clock. And the sun stopped shining. Then the curtain in the sanctuary tore down the middle, crying out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I entrust my life. After he said this, he breathed for the last time. And now a reading from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, in you our ancestors trusted, 
they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver, let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Well, we have come to the hardest day of the Christian year in a time in our lives, which is probably one of the hardest. We are in a time where the fear of death and sickness are all around us. Every place we turn, we are told how many people across the country and world are sick with COVID and how many have just died. Just yesterday, here in Canada, we heard more news about projected deaths due to COVID. Each of our four churches has been touched with COVID death and illness. And all of us are doing what we can to help keep ourselves and others safe. In a time where life is scary and difficult, our need is to reach out and to touch one another to hug those in pain, to grasp hands and solidarity and support. And yet in these days, doing so may very well cause someone to become very sick or even worse. We are living in a world that is filled with grief, loss of normalcy, loss of jobs, loss of school and friends, loss of connection and loss of loved ones. As grief experts will tell us, the best way to work through grief and loss is to look for connection, connection with one another and connection with God. Connecting the ways we always have are just 
not possible right now. And this further adds to our grief. Our readings for Good Friday are, of course, filled with grief and loss. There is the clear grief of Mary and the disciples wailing at losing Jesus in death, but there are many other forms of grief. In Jesus' death, there is a loss of belief, the belief that God would save Jesus from this, the belief of the disciples that we thought Jesus was the Messiah, the loss of belief of the disciples who gave up everything to follow Jesus. What are they to do now? The loss of their freedom as they wait, cowering in an upper room, fear that they will also be charged and hung. In their grief, they are struggling to connect. The Good Friday story is full of sadness, struggles, and pain. But if we can part the shadows of grief for just a little bit, we begin to see that there is connection, that there is hope. Beginning with that story of Monday, Thursday, as Jesus washes his disciples' feet, he reminds them that servants are equal to their masters, that those who serve are just as beloved as those who are served. Now, while we clearly cannot wash one another's feet right now, we are reminded that all people are equal, that all are beloved the same by God. And this belovedness, this equality of love shines hope into those shadows. In the grief and the sadness of Jesus' mother and the disciple whom he beloved, we are reminded that connection doesn't always need to be made by flesh and blood, but by heart. And it is in this heart connection that we can be made whole again. In the darkest times in the Good Friday story, as Jesus cries out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We are reminded that God intimately understands our deepest pain and that even Jesus can cry out to God from the depths of his heart. We are never alone in our pain. God can indeed handle anything we can scream or cry at God. In this time of quarantining and isolation, in this time of COVID, our lives are full of grief and struggle. We have lost routines. We have lost our traditions. As Christians, we are unable to celebrate Holy Week and Easter the way that we are used to. We cannot grocery shop the way that we are used to. We cannot even grieve death the way that we are used to. In grief, we need connection. But connections feel near impossible when you cannot reach out and touch one another. Our old traditions of grief and spirit are no longer helpful to us. Traditions of gathering in a large group, traditions of handshakes and of hugs, traditions of eating hot crust buns together and sharing in treats together. And yet when we take the time on this Good Friday, bursts of connection and hope emerge as well. In new traditions and new ways, we are connecting with one another. We are helping each other to walk this journey of grief, this journey of loss, this journey of pain. Now, this worship this morning is just one example of how we are remaking our old traditions. Through Zoom calls, Facebook videos, and YouTube channels, we are connecting with more and more people all the time. I personally have seen more colleagues in the last month than I ever would have thanks to Zoom. All around us, we see examples of folks reaching out to help one another. My Facebook feed has been filled with people who are freely using their gifts and skills to make masks for others to wear for protection. Nearly every block of sidewalk around town has art and messages of love and kindness of people and families reaching strangers through sidewalk chalk, giving hope and connection. 
There have been Facebook groups started with the sole purpose of helping one another, of connecting those who need help to those who just want to help. I don't know if you've heard of Fuel the Superheroes Project in Kitchener-Waterloo. It began just 10 days ago as a way to bring healthy meals to frontline workers in Grand River and St. Mary's Hospital, knowing that those who are hungry and tired are most susceptible to getting illness. Now, their goal was to raise $5,000 to give to a local small business to cater these meals for those who are overworked on the frontline staff of medical facilities. But within a week, they beat that goal and have continued to raise money to help feed even more, to protect and to save. We are living in a dark, difficult, and confusing time. We are living with grief on top of grief on top of grief. We are feeling disconnected from everything we thought that we knew. Facts are changing every hour. It is a hard time. And yet through the Good Friday story, we are reminded that we are never alone, even when we are in isolation in our homes. Through our friends and our neighbors, we are reminded that human connection is always evolving. When one way ends, many new ways emerge. And this holy weekend, may you be able to find those connections, those holy connections, not seen through touch, but seen through heart. Connections to God, to creation, to those gathered here, and all who find hope in the shadows. Thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus, we wait here by your tomb, carrying our grief, the grief of the one who handed him over, the grief of the denier, the grief of the crucifiers. We carry the grief of the lost, the heartbroken, the bereft. Upon you was laid the grief of us all. It is finished. God of endings, God of darkness, God of the tomb, God of dark days and great loss, be with us now as we wait with Jesus. Amen. Following Jewish burial customs, they took Jesus's body and wrapped it with spices and in linen cloths. There was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid, because it was the Jewish preparation day and the tomb was nearby. They placed Jesus in it. <laughs> 